goes to the gospel record of John at chapter number 9. Gospel according to John at chapter 9, verses 1 through verse number 11. And I want to preach about Jesus, the light of the world. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus, <laughs> Hallelujah, <laughs> made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Amen. Thank you. You may have your seats. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. As long as I am in the world, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. On this occasion, Jesus is just passing by. And there is this blind man on the highway side begging. This is a rather strange miracle because the blind man never asks to see. He's just on the highway side begging and Jesus is just passing by. But here is an occasion, here is an opportunity just serendipitously for Jesus to just demonstrate his power. It's just, it's just a chance for Jesus to punch holes in the darkness. He just feels like working a miracle. The blind man doesn't ask for anything. Jesus just sees an opportunity to demonstrate that if he wants to, he can do whatever he pleases. And the disciples who are always dull and slow to think wants to know who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind because they thought disease and tragedy was the result of some unconfessed sin, some secret sin in the life of an individual. That's what, that's what Job's friends thought when Job was such suffering through his tragedies. They, they commiserated with him for a few days and then they said, now Job, tell us the truth. 
You're not just going through this. You must have done something in your past for you to be going through what you're going through. And people so thought that sin was a result of somebody or blindness or illness was a result of somebody's sins. But Jesus said, this man is not responsible nor his parents. But the glory of God, the wonder of God is to be worked out in this man's life today. I just feel like working a miracle. I just want to demonstrate that as long as I am in the world, I am is the light of the world. As long as I am in the world. That's, that's one of John's I am statements. As long as I am in the world, I am is the light of the world. Jesus just happens by and this man is blind and Jesus works a miracle on him for he said I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day for the night is coming when no man can work. I want you to see the misery of this sightless man. His condition has rendered him a beggar. He is a miserable beggar. He is sightless. He has never seen a sunrise. He's never seen the face of his parents. He's never seen a tree. He does not know what a flower looks like. Those are words and scents and smells, but he cannot see. He's sightless. He cannot work. He's a drag on society. Uh, he's a, a family member that you keep in an attic room or keep in the cellar or keep in the back because he's a nuisance. He's not worth very much. He's sightless. He can't take care of himself so somehow he meanders to passers by he finds his way to a thoroughfare so that he can beg because of his blindness that's got to be miserable to depend on somebody else to take care of you his blindness renders him helpless. He finds some thoroughfare where passers by are happening his way and he does all he can do and that is beg for his sustenance, beg for his survival, beg for his living. That must be a miserable way to live. But he doesn't complain, obviously, because he doesn't ask Jesus for anything. He makes no request of the master. He's not like those 10 lepers who yell out at Jesus. He's not like this other blind man, Bartimaeus, who yells out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He's not like this Syrophoenician woman who comes because her daughter is vexed with the devil. He's not like this woman with the issue of blood who grabs Jesus' clothes. He's not like Jairus who asks Jesus to come to his house. He's not like Jesus' mother who tells them to fill water pots full of water. He's just on the highway side, and Jesus feels like working a miracle. Uh, he's in the way where a miracle is about to happen. Somebody ought to help me preach right here. And brothers and sisters, you ought to want to be in the way when a miracle is getting ready to happen. Uh, church would be a good place to be in the way when God is about to do the unexpected. The reason why many of us don't get a breakthrough is because we don't expect one. We're not hungry for it yet. We're not thirsty for it yet. We can do for ourselves and so as long as we can just about make it, we don't really look for Jesus to do much. But here is this blind man, miserable in his condition, on the highway side begging and he never asks Jesus for anything because he does not know who he is. The scripture says Jesus saw him but the man never saw Jesus. Then Jesus spits on the ground. Spit. Spit. Saliva. Spit on the ground, makes a little clay of mud 
and puts it on the man's eyes, spitting in his eyes could have insulted him had he seen it. But, but Jesus does something for him that he can't see. And brothers and sisters, we thank and praise God for what we see he has done. But we need to learn how to praise God for what he does for us that we don't see. I wish I had two or three witnesses here. We don't see who could have broken our house last night. We don't see who could have ran into us and killed us on the highway. God keeps from us what we can't see, and that's a reason to praise God. Um, I, I mentioned to the persons who were in our early service that many of us praise God because of, because of a job because of a family, uh, because of money in our bank, uh, because of a 401k retirement plan, because of what we can see. But we need to learn how to praise God in spite of. In spite of my boy is still on drugs. I wish I had somebody to help me. In spite of I'm in Houston trying to make it by myself. God knows how to bless you in spite of what your supervisor has in mind. In spite of how they're plotting against you among your friends. In spite of how they're trying to pull the rug out from under you. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind... I wish I had a Bible reader. God can bless you in spite of what your enemies are trying to do to you. He prepares a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, he anoints my head with oil so that even when they are trying to trick me, my cup is just running over. Learn how to thank God for what you don't see. I wish I had one or two more witnesses here. I bless the Lord for what I see he has done. But there are some things God has worked out for me that I don't see. Uh, St. Augustine calls that prevenient grace. That's God moving on my behalf before I even know it needs to be done. That's God providing a ram in the bush before I even get up on Mount Moriah. That's God sending Jesus to die for my sins before I was formed in my mother's womb. God already knows what you need before you need it. So by the time you get to it, he's already worked it out. That's God blessing you in spite of how low down you've been. See how I slipped that in on you right there? Because God's grace blesses us in spite of who we are. This man asks for nothing. And Jesus just feels like punching a hole in the darkness. He just feels like blessing somebody. And I want to be in the way. When the Lord just feels like blessing somebody. Because I need a blessing. I need a breakthrough. I need, I need mercy. I need the grace. I need the goodness of God. So when God is getting ready to hand out blessings. I want to be in the place where those blessings are going to be handed out. That's the misery of this sightless man. He can't help himself. But then yonder comes the ministry of a sovereign master. Jesus Christ, who is ready now to reveal himself in one of his I am statements. He says in the Gospel of John, several I ams. I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. I am the light of the world. As the story progresses, this man who was born blind, Jesus performs a miracle by spitting on the ground, making some clay, and putting it on the man's eyes. Now, this is perhaps the only miracle where Jesus 
heals intermediately. Uh, he uses another agent to assist them in the miracle. Had he wanted to, Jesus just could have said, be seen. I know that's Ebonics, but that's, 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 you, 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 you understand where I'm trying to go. Jesus just could have told the man, you got sight from now on. But he spit on the ground and made clay and put it on the man's eyes and said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Jesus was going to heal him, but the man had to participate in his own miracle. Somebody's trying to see where I'm trying to go here. The Lord wants to bless you this morning, but there are times when you got to participate in your own miracle. The Lord wants to bless you with a job, but you got to look for one. See how glad you got right there? God wants to send blessings your way, but you've got to be ready to receive them because if the blessing comes and you're not ready, you're going to mess up you and the blessing. It, it, it took God 40 years to get the children of Israel to the promised land. That journey could have taken 40 days, but it ended up taking 40 years. Because not only did he have to get Israel out of Egypt, he had to get Egypt out of Israel. He had to get that culture, that background, that junk, that stuff, that mess out of them before he could cross them over into the promised land. And you may not be at the place psychologically or spiritually where you're ready to receive what God has for you because you're still holding on to some stuff that has nothing to do with how God's trying to bless you. You, you still got somebody in your heart that you need to get rid of. You still got some junk that you need to let cast by because God will not set you up for a blessing for you to mess it up with your attitude. I, I'm going to show you in the text how this man's attitude was receptive to his blessings because they actually put him out of the temple. He's seeing now. And the scripture says the people who knew him from birth know that he can see. So the Bible says these people asked him, how were your eyes open? I told you earlier, he doesn't even know who Jesus is. He says, a man named Jesus. That, that, that could have been any man because there was a whole lot of men named Jesus. Jesus was a very common name. He said it was just a man named Jesus. He told me to go wash. I went and now I'm back. See it. He told me to go and I went. And when I went, I came back. See it. He told me to go and I went. And I came back from where he told me to go, see it. He told me to go, I went, I came back, see it. I, I don't know the dynamics of it. I don't know how that works exactly. He just told me to go, I went, and here I am, see it. Now watch this. It was the Sabbath day. And so they called this boy's parents and said to them, if y'all don't want to get put out of this church, how did that boy get his sight? Stay with me here. The scripture says his mother and father, not wanting to upset the power structure, not wanting to offend the religious elders and get excommunicated from the fellowship, say, I don't know. You have to ask him. He's old enough. Let him speak for himself. So they call that boy in. And they say, how did you get your sight? He said, a man named Jesus told me to go. I went and I came back 
sin. They say, don't give him any glory. Give the glory to God. He's a sinner. Don't glorify him. If you don't want us to put you out of this church, don't give him any glory. But this boy is not intimidated like his parents. He's not afraid like folk who've gotten used to being in power. Got used to people liking them. Got used to enjoying being in the fellowship at the temple. This boy said, I don't know who he is. He might be exactly who you say. But all I know. Is one day I was blind. And right now I can see. And they told him, get out of here. He said, all right. He left them and followed Jesus. Listen, there's a lot of people who love Jesus but don't like church. Because at church, you got to deal with all these attitudes. And you got to answer all these questions. And you got to walk through all these people staring at you. And all these folk talking about you who ain't no better than you. Because to tell the truth, everybody on every pew got some issues that they're struggling with. Got some problems that they can't solve. Some conditions they wish they could get out from under. Stop acting like you so holy and you got to question everybody's spirituality and you've got to inspect everybody's fruit to see whether or not they are full of the holy. You ought to thank God you in the family. I wish I had somebody to help me here. Stop being so critical of sinners folk that we know are sinners because if the truth is told none of us in here can stand being followed by a camera 24 hours a day well let me let me let me testify for myself I can't stand no FBI investigation uh, looking into my records and checking into my past because I'd be in hell right now have I got a witness here but thank God Jesus does not bring up your past. He doesn't ask you any questions. He doesn't try to inspect anything going on in your life. The boy said he might be everything you say. All I know. And brothers and sisters, really, all a witness can say is what they know. I said, all a witness can testify about is what they have seen and heard. If you don't know, then you can't say anything. But if you know what God has done for you, then you ought to come on and be a witness. I was blind, but now I can see. I wish I had a witness here. I was lost and on my way to hell. But Jesus turned me all around. He put a new song in my mouth. He said, joy bells ringing in my soul. And although everything is not well in my finances, it's well with my soul. It's not all the time well in my family, but it is well in my soul. Have I got a witness here? There's not always peace in my personal life, but I've got peace deep down in my soul. Because the Lord Jesus came and saved me. And all I know, all I can testify of is one day I was blind, but now I can see. I need some folk here who are not ashamed to testify. I need about five or six people as I close who are not embarrassed to let these other folk know that I don't know a whole lot of theology. I don't even know how to recite all the books of the Bible. I don't know anything about etymological roots of words. 
I don't know anything about simile and syntax. All I know. I don't know too much about theology. All I know is Jesus loves me. This I know. Because the Bible tells me so. Have I got a witness here? I don't know too much about the Old Testament. I just know that uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And God shut off the garden of Eden. Because they could not go back in that way. But then I heard in the New Testament. God sent another woman named Mary. And then he opened another way for us to gain entrance to the tree of life. You can help me close this won't you. I thank God for this man in his miserable condition. Because it shows me that everybody who is blind today can go home seeing this afternoon. Because he's just that kind of a God. He just sometimes feels like blessing somebody. Now the only way you can get God's blessings, you got to do what this man did in the text. He said he might be everything you say he is. But all I know about him is whereas one day I was blind, but now I can see. And the Bible says he followed Jesus, giving him praise everywhere he went. And if you want the Lord to bless you this morning, you got to praise him everywhere you go. You got to praise him when things are good. Praise him when things are bad. Praise him when you're up. Praise him when you're down. Praise him when you got money in your pocket. Praise him when you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Praise him when your health is good. Praise him when you got a bad report from the doctor. Praise him when they want to see you. Praise him when they don't even like your presence. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. You ought to tell somebody now you got to give me some room right now. You got to move out my way right now. Because I am a witness. And a witness can only testify about what he or she knows. I know God is a healer. I know God will open doors. I know he'll put food on your table. I know he'll make your enemies leave you alone. I know weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. I know he'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I know if I delight myself in the Lord, he'll give me the desires of my heart. I know he's Adam's redeemer. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Abraham's sacrifice. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on fire. He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Gideon's fleece. He's Samson's power. He's David's music. I know he's Solomon's wisdom. He's Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead. I know he's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. I know he's God's only son. He's Mary's baby boy. He's James and Jude's big brother. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Matthew's king. Mark's suffering servant. Luke's great physician. John's word made flesh. I know he's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. He's the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Here's something else I know. He's a doctor in a sick room. He's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's a friend when you're friendly. Bread when you're hungry. He's water when you're thirsty. I know he's a burden bearer. I know he's a mother for the motherless. I know he'll pick you up when you fall. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell him I know what the Lord can do. I know, I know, he'll make a way out of no way. Have you know him? Have you tried him? And he all right. 
Won't he make a way out of no way? If you got your own testimony, why don't you hug somebody? Tell them you don't know like I know what the Lord hey, what the Lord I know he's alright. All I know is whereas one day I was blind, but right now I can see. Thank God I know what I know. I know that 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 he went down the family tree and and pick me out of my brothers. I know he saved me. I know that when this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, I have another building, a house not made with hands. I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know that when this life is over, know that some glad morning I'm going home to live with him because he went away to prepare a place for me and I know he's going to come again and receive me unto himself Jesus said that where I am there you will be also and to be a Christian there's some things you got to know you, you got to know you've been born again. You've got to know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, people ought to guess your age, and they ought to guess how much you weigh. They ought to guess what you do for a living, but they ought not guess whether or not you've been born again. Because that ought to just show in your, in your countenance, in your, in your testimony, in the way you walk, in the way you live your life. They ought to know that there's something different about you, that yonder is a child of God. No matter what goes on in your life, I know. He may be a sinner, this man says, but all I know is one day I was blind, but right now I can see. 